And here with us today, Professor Kave Madani, Director of United Nations University Institute for Water, Environment and Health. I and him will talk about the water crisis in the world. And how do you do, Professor Madani? It's good to have you here in the studio. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Today. Sir, let's get on to it. Um, you've coined the term uh, water bankruptcy. For me, it is a um, powerful and also a meaningful term. But for our viewer out there, can you elaborate more on that, the term water bankruptcy, what is it? Um, we have been used to the term water crisis, but I think the term is a little vague and, and I, I think we need to change that. And that's why water bankruptcy might be a better term to, to tell us what's happening in the world right now. Um, uh, let's use financial terms to, to help us understand the concept better. Um, uh, surface water is our checking account. So, you know, every year nature gives us some water, puts deposits some um, water into our account, and we are allowed to use that um, to, to, to an extent that, that our rivers and, and lakes remain healthy. Um, uh, surface groundwater is our saving account, the, the water that we inherited from our ancestors, from our grandparents. And, and you normally use the saving account when you're a little short in your checking account, but you then deposit money into it and, and keep your resilience. What we haven't been successful at is, is this. Um, instead of saving our groundwater uh, for the future, we have exhausted our checking account, our surface water, and then have gone after our um, groundwater as the result, not only we have dried up our rivers, lakes, streams, and so on, but also our groundwater is declining as a result. We are seeing sinking cities like Jakarta and, 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 and then other problems. Just look around the world and see what you're, you're seeing. You deforestation, desertification, dried um, lakes, wetlands, and, and rivers, um, fires, uh, sand and dust storms, and, and on, you know, so on. So I think this situation is a situation of a bankrupt um, entity because a lot of these damages are irreversible. And as a, as a bankrupt uh, business owner, if you admit that the failure has happened, you have a chance to, to address some of the problems, mitigate some of the problems, but also if, if you admit earlier, you can adapt yourself to some of the problems. And I think that's what we need to do. So the crisis is over, the world is really water bankrupt. Uh, I want to ask something that maybe it's also my personal question that um, beyond the literal depletion of the water resources, does water bankruptcy encompass, um, maybe we can say a mismanaged uh, governance or maybe policy or even us societal attitudes? Absolutely, because because without without humans on this planet, the nature has been able to regulate itself. Yes, nature has had dry years and nature has had wet years. Yeah. But then but the nature can regulate itself. Humans as a result of bad management, as a result of not being able to balance development and their demand and supply have created this situation. So some of the damages we create toward the ecosystem um, are permanent and lasting. As the result, we get the feedback as humans. The human societies are being affected, right? We, we know throughout history, sometimes civilizations have got destroyed because of the lack of water. And this is what we are seeing, forced migrations, farmers going bankrupt, ecosystems being affected, fish dying, and, and there is no shortage of problems when it comes to water around the world. But what makes it more complicated is that the, the nature of these problems are very different. Um, in this country, we at, at the same time, we are suffering from too much water, flood, and, oh, yeah. and too yeah. little water. We have <laughs> pollution. We have, we have all these problems at the same time. And sometimes they're even conflicting mm -hmm. because how do I deal with it? And a society that is dealing with too much water doesn't have the bandwidth to also think about too little water. And this makes this, uh, you know, very challenging. And the, at the global scale, we are dealing with this problem that is even being exacerbated by climate change. Yeah. Well, we also know that uh, the dry regions of the world, like the maybe we can say the Middle East, the North Africa, are all dealing with water scarcity, but. You are saying that the whole world is dealing with water problems. Um, can you 
tell us more about that. Is it just them, the dry places, or how does that balance the world? I mean, so I, I think we, we're in Jakarta right now. If Jakarta, you know, which, which is green and, and, yes. and, and wet, has managed to create um, issues for its groundwater, then you, you understand that the problem of water scarcity and water bankruptcy is not restricted to, um, to the dry regions of the world, to, mm -hmm. to the Middle East and North Africa. We are um, seeing droughts in, in Canada and mm -hmm. farmers suffering from the lack of water mm -hmm. in Canada, which is one of the countries with a, a lot of water. Yes. Think about it, you have the same situation in Brazil, in, mm -hmm. in China, in some of the wettest places on the planet. So, so the problem of mismanagement um, and, and the, you know, the mismatch of supply and demand mm -hmm. um, is not restricted to the dry areas. Mm -hmm. Wherever you manage water poorly, you eventually face this problem. And unfortunately, this is what we are seeing. But the, 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 the appearance of the problem is in different forms. Yeah. And that's what makes us sometimes confused or distracted. Well, uh, from the um, policy perspective, how does one even begin to address a problem? I mean, uh, as pervasive as a global water bankruptcy, we can say, uh, when the manifestations are so diverse across um, different parts of the world. I think the first step is to admit that the problem exists, and yes. you know that's that's the issue of of a, you know a, a bankrupt entity. If mm. you're owning and, and managing a, a business that is bankrupt, mm. you have two choices: go in and taking more loans and promising mm. that you would address the problem, or admitting that you're bankrupt. So every creditor, everyone you're dealing, you're having business with, understands that the situation is no longer sustainable, and and that then there is a, there is a, a need for sitting down and, and thinking about what can be mitigated and, and where you have to adapt to the new situation. The problem we are having at the global scale is that the, the, um, our, our, the diversity of the problem. So it's, it's very hard to have a dialogue that is, very, that is inclusive. And unfortunately, I would say the global south voice is, is absent and a lot of the stories are being told from, from the lens of the global north. We need more countries from the global south at the negotiations table, at, 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 you know, at the UN forums, talking about the diversity of the problems, talking about the 70% of the water in the world that goes in, into the agricultural sector to produce food, to create food security for the world talking about the problems of the farmers um, that, that would lose their livelihood and not only their food, but their, their income as the result of no water. We don't have plans for them. We have not thought properly about these things. So it starts with admitting and it starts, I think it, it also requires promotion, promotion by the media, promotion by the countries to ensure that these problems are being properly captured. Well, we, I think we also, um, we can understand that this is a, a pressing matter. And is there still time for us to bring this uh, matter up first to have a dialogue with other countries, with um, bodies in the world? Is there still time? I mean, uh, so, so it's, it's very late, but it's yeah. not too late, right? Okay. So, so the thing is, uh, we are uh, on a positive side, we are humans, we are smart, and we have been able to cope with a lot of challenges in the past. We invent, we come up, we innovate, we come up with technologies and we learn from our mistakes and past. That's a good side of this story. The sad and bad side of the story is that in the process of adaptation and learning from our mistakes, uh, it's the poor and the most vulnerable communities that, that are being impacted the most. We learned this uh, in, in the COVID-19 yes. crisis, that the poor communities suffered. We said at the beginning that the virus doesn't, doesn't discriminate mm -hmm. against rich or poor, but we, we learned that the rich could survive and the poor could not. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the problem that, that we must be careful about. Yes, we human beings can, can fight and can, can cope with this challenge and address some of the problem some of the some of the damages are permanent and we cannot restore them or fix them but but what we need to be careful about is is to be um, to create equity to understand and appreciate the fact that that some of the vulnerable communities and one vulnerable nations would suffer more and and to address this issue we have to facilitate the transfer of knowledge 
and science and technology and funds between and within nations to ensure that, that we create an inclusive and just future for, for, for the whole world. Well, um, how about the, this, Professor Madani? I mean, you said that uh, one of the factors is us, we are responsible for the management of water in our region, our country, and the world. How about the, uh, the climate change? What impacts does the climate change bring to this matter? It, will it worsen or maybe even force us to work harder? Or, I mean, please uh, enlighten us about this, our mismanagement and the climate change. Uh, so I already told you the house is on fire. Yeah. Now, you know, climate change is adding, you know, more fuel, fuel yes. to this, this mm -hmm. um, crazy fire and it exacerbates the situation. Climate change is not the cause of, the main cause of our water problems. Mm -hmm. The water problems have been there and we have created them through mismanagement and bad management and lack of foresight. But climate change certainly is putting more pressure on us. Of course, it can create a, create a motivation or incentive for us to address this problem but at the same time it, it means that the runway is very short we don't have much time because climate change um, is is making some of the dry areas drier it, it creates more extreme events like floods and droughts and fires and and other things that we have been experiencing lots of natural disasters water related um, it it also increases the water demand of some some of the crops so they need for more water uh, through the evapotranspiration process. So we, we, our demand is increasing. At the same time, population is increasing. We need more water for more food, more energy, more goods, and more production. And, and, and then the water is becoming more limited. Our glaciers are melting. Yeah. Our problems are getting worse and worse. And this imbalance is being created. We have built our nations, cultures, norms, societies around a norm a natural norm and that natural norm is being disturbed and disrupted right now and we are not not equipped to deal with this new reality or this new normal well professor marani there's a lot of things to talk about but unfortunately we are limited by time we must have you again on this table speaking to us but uh, finally uh, what single message would you want uh, would you most want the world to take away from our conversation today about this global water bankruptcy I, I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm in Jakarta and I, I look forward to coming back. I think the world should know that the current narratives about the water are not inclusive and mm. they don't appreciate um, the complexity and reality and diversity of the problems we are facing in the global south and through your help and other, other colleagues, scientists and activists in the global south, I hope we do a better job in bringing uh, attention to the reality of the problems here. Well, thank you very much, Professor Kafe Madani, Director of the United Nations University Institute of Water, Environment and Health. We must have you again here. Uh, looking forward for you again in the studio.